I've made lasagna over a thousand times throughout my life, but today I'm putting my lasagna head to head with Olive Garden's to see which one is better. All right, so we gotta start with making some fresh pasta, and you know me, I love to use egg yolk only dough. So that's what we're gonna do today. We've got the Heritage Happy Eggs, which is pretty much what I'm always using for eggs at this point. It's gonna be a nice, small four dozen egg batch. First thing we're gonna do is crack all four dozen eggs into the bowl, and then we'll separate the yolks from the whites. All right, we're about a dozen in. I haven't broken a yolk yet, so. We, oh, I broke one, I broke one. It's because I was talking, I'm running my mouth. So that is four dozen eggs, whole eggs. Now we have to separate the yolks from the whites. And to do that, you know, there's a lot of different hacks and tricks you can do. You can use a water bottle. These are honestly, I don't think they're worth the time. The best way and the way that I used to do it when I worked in restaurants was to literally just use your hands and fish out all the yolks into a separate bowl. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's gonna be a little bit cold. It's gonna feel a little bit weird, but honestly, when you've done it as many times as I have, you just kind of get used to it. And you don't wanna do that. I just broke a yolk. Ah. All right, now that we have all of our egg yolks separated, I've already weighed out the flour. This is about 920 grams of double zero flour. Double zero flour is like the finest, best flour you can use for making pasta. Honestly though, if you only have all purpose flour at home, use it, it's gonna be fine. You're not gonna tell a difference to be honest. Just make pasta, like don't get too crazy with it. So we're gonna make a little bit of a, a well with our flour. I like to use the bottom of the bowl. Just kind of makes like a nice, perfect well for the eggs. And then we're gonna go in with the eggs and you can mix the egg yolks up ahead of time before adding them in. But I make videos for the internet for a living and people wouldn't wanna watch that. They'd wanna watch the eggs be poured into the well. So that's why I do it like this. So like if you do that on TikTok, you might get 100 million views. Now that we got our eggs in there. It's pretty much very simple. We're gonna need to mix up all the eggs and then slowly incorporate the flour until we get to kind of a paste consistency. And then from there, we'll start kneading it to start forming that gluten and then get a really nice ball of dough that will then be able to roll out and form into sheets of lasagna. I feel like people love to watch me pour the eggs and break the eggs and then obviously see the final product. But I feel like people, at least I think, that people get bored with watching the, the entire process. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see a full, almost pasta masterclass on how to make pasta in all types of different shapes. And if enough of you guys wanna see that, we'll make a full video on that soon. I'm honestly kind of excited to try the Olive Garden lasagna too. I haven't had Olive Garden in quite a long time. So you see, we start to incorporate the flour from the inside of the well first, just because we don't wanna have a break in one of the walls and then have eggs all over the place. But we get to this point now where it's almost starting to get to a thick paste consistency, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll mix a little bit more flour in, and then we'll switch from our fork to the bench scraper to start really chopping in all the rest of that flour. So we'll start bringing this together. And again, you're gonna kinda get your hands a little bit messy, but it's all part of the process. And then all these little dry pieces that come off, you wanna reincorporate those back in earlier than later, because once they dry out too much, they get much harder to reincorporate. And now that our ball of dough is fully rested, uh, we're going to get it unwrapped and we'll go ahead and we will cut maybe a third of it. That's kind of what we're looking for. You can kind of see all those air pockets in there. That's by like properly kneading the dough. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna start with a smaller piece, get a little bit of flour on our board. And whenever you're rolling pasta, kind of think about what your final product is going to be. So in this case, we're making lasagna and it's gonna be in a rectangle pan. So we're gonna start with forming our dough into a rectangle just to make it easier on the machine and kind of form it before we really try to form it. We get a little bit of flour. And we're gonna start with a rolling pin and just kind of set the shape and get it started. Now, I think it's probably safe to say that most of you don't have a big commercial pasta sheeter in your house, and that's totally fine. If you have one of those like hand crank pasta rollers, I have like four of those, I use those all the time. Or you can honestly 
You can use a rolling pin, you can use a bottle of wine, whatever it takes to roll this out. And we wanna get this as thin as possible, especially for lasagna, because we're gonna have so many layers. We wanna have nice thin sheets of pasta. And I think this goes without saying, you wanna start on the thickest setting of your pasta roller. That way you're not stressing out the pasta and you're rolling it out nice and smoothly. Now you can see that this is like almost a very textured sheet of pasta, all these little air bubbles and air pockets. That's exactly what we're looking for. And that's why it's important to knead the dough properly and sheet it properly. So you get all these beautiful air pockets and beautiful texture on your pasta dough. Now, like I said, we're trying to get this pasta as thin as possible for our lasagna. So I'm gonna dust a little bit more flour on both sides because we still have a little bit yet to go. Okay, we're gonna put this one here to the side while we finish rolling this one out. All right, now that we have all of our pasta sheeted, you can probably even see my hand through the pasta dough. That's exactly what we're looking for. That means that we have a nice thin sheet of pasta that's gonna work perfectly in the lasagna. So now it's time to cut this to the exact size that we need to fit our pan, and then we'll start layering all the different layers of lasagna. I'm just gonna brush off all the excess flour. That way it's not giving any uh, gumminess to the lasagna or anything. And this is the pan that I'm gonna use for the lasagna. You can obviously use any size or shape container that you want, but it's just me and my camera guy eating this lasagna today. So I think this is gonna be plenty for us. And we got some breadsticks coming from Olive Garden. So just start cutting our sheets into perfect rectangles that will lay in there perfect. And then we'll just stack up all these rectangles of pasta sheets while we get everything else going. And then we'll do the same thing with our other sheet as well. So now we have our beautiful sheets of lasagna, or our sheets of pasta to make the lasagna. So now I'm gonna clean up, get our bolognese, get our ricotta, get the basil, get the Parmesan, all that good stuff. And we'll start assembling the lasagna and get it in the oven. All right, so now we're gonna make a ricotta cheese mixture that goes in the lasagna in place of a classic bechamel. I'm not claiming this lasagna recipe to be traditional by any means. If it was, you would usually add a bechamel in with the bolognese. Um, I just personally don't like that, so I like to make a ricotta mixture with ricotta, lemon zest, Parmesan cheese, olive oil, salt, pepper, maybe a little basil if I have it, maybe some parsley, kind of whatever you want, maybe some chili flake. It's kind of up to you, but this is what I like to do. So we will take the, well that came out perfectly. Ricotta goes into the bowl. We will add some salt, more than you probably think, to be honest. Uh, a good bit of black pepper. Uh, some olive oil, some Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna do the, the zest of We'll start with one lemon and see how it is. I can always add more if I want. Okay. And then we'll just mix this up. I probably should have gotten a bigger bowl, but I don't know what I'm doing. And actually I was gonna add basil in here, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm just gonna add maybe more basil than I normally would uh, when we layer the lasagna. I think we're gonna get kind of crazy. And we're gonna add the juice of that lemon. I think it needs it. We'll mix that up. That's just kind of like, again, lemon is definitely not traditional in lasagna, but I honestly add lemon to like a lot of pasta dishes, especially like heavy meat, heavy like ragus and things like that. It really just kind of brightens everything up. Yep, I think that's exactly where we want it. Now we're gonna get ready and layer everything together and get this into the oven. All right, now that all of our pasta dough is made and sheeted, we've got everything laid out for us. We've got our bolognese sauce, our ricotta mixture that we made earlier, mozzarella cheese, Parmesan, a little bit of lemon zest. We're gonna add a little bit of that more in here too, some fresh basil, and now it's time to start assembling it. So I like to do a little layer of sauce on the bottom first, and then we'll do a layer of our pasta dough, our ricotta, our mozzarella, basil, lemon zest, Parmesan, and just keep repeating that up till we get to the top and we'll get it in the oven. Just a little bit on the bottom layer. You don't need a crazy amount. 
And honestly, every layer you build, you gotta remember that we have layers to this lasagna, so you don't wanna go too heavy with anything because it's gonna really add up at the end. I can already tell this is gonna be a win for me and a loss for Olive Garden. I mean, I don't think they're using fresh pasta for their lasagna, and I am, so. Our nice thin sheet of pasta dough, push that in there. And then we'll go with a thin layer of our bolognese sauce. I let this bolognese cook for like three hours last night. The whole house smelled incredible. We'll do a full video on that soon, so let me know if you want to see that in the comments. Now we'll do a little bit of shredded mozzarella. And then we'll go in with a couple lines of that ricotta mixture that we made earlier. And by the way, this is the biggest basil leaves I've ever seen in my life. These things are massive. I don't know where this grocery store is growing this basil at, but I don't know, it's pretty crazy to me. So we'll do some torn basil around. A little bit of grated Parmesan Reggiano cheese. and maybe just a, a little bit of lemon zest. So that's it for the first layer of the lasagna. We'll layer that up all the way to the top, get it in the oven, and then we gotta get in the car and go pick up the lasagna from Olive Garden, because I'm ready for some breadsticks and for the competition to really begin. All right, that's right. Today I'm putting my lasagna up head to head against Olive Garden's. I've got their website pulled up here, and I'm sure we've all eaten at Olive Garden a million times. I know I did, especially growing up as a kid but I'm curious today to see how their lasagna tastes because I have no memory at all of what it tastes like. So I'm gonna give them a call and place an order right now. Hi, Plus Olive Garden, how can I help you? Uh, yeah, can I place an order for pickup? Hi, right, what can I get you today? Uh, I'd like to order one order of the lasagna. Okay, hey, did you want the lunch or dinner portion? Uh, which one's bigger, dinner? I guess that, yeah. was, that was a dumb question. I'll do the dinner portion. Okay, we will see you soon then. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, the order is placed. They said it'll be ready in about 15 to 20 minutes, which is super fast. So we need to get ready, get in the car, go pick up the lasagna. And mine is almost done in the oven right now. And then we will taste them side by side and see whose is better. All right, so we're on our way to Olive Garden right here. And Josh, who is my cameraman behind the camera, just told me that he used to work at Olive Garden back in like high school or whatever. So I don't know if like, he can give me any insider secrets to this lasagna. I feel like he's kind of being a traitor right now to his, you know, his previous employer. If Olive Garden's lasagna wins, we were just saying like, what if this is the best lasagna I've ever had in my life? <laughs> um, I don't think it will be. I've tasted my own lasagna before and I think it's fantastic. Um, but I think it'll be cool to see like how it compares. And at the end of the day, we're gonna get breadsticks, hopefully some of those Andes mints. I don't know if you guys remember at Olive Garden, but like when I went there as a kid, when they would bring the check, they'd give you the Andes chocolate mints and they were the best. So I hope I can like bribe the hostess to, you know, give me a handful of them because I want to eat a bunch of them. Lasagna is secured. I asked the hostess if she's ever had, or if she likes the lasagna here. She's never tried it. Um, but she said it's a fan favorite. So we'll take it home and give it a try and, and see how it goes. All right, we just got back from Olive Garden. My lasagna is still in the oven, so I'm gonna unpack this a while and see what I have to work with. Got the breadsticks. Here is their lasagna. Uh, doesn't look bad. And then of course, the classic Olive Garden salad. And then, ooh, I got the Andy's mint in there. I'm gonna go grab my lasagna out of the oven and then we'll get these both plated up and see which one I like better. All right, my lasagna just came out of the oven and this is gonna be hard to beat. This looks perfect, nice and golden brown, bubbling around the edges. I cannot wait to dig into this, but we gotta let it rest for a couple minutes so it doesn't turn into a big mess. All right, I'm not gonna eat their lasagna out of the takeout container, so I'm gonna do it right and get it plated onto an actual plate. There we go. All right, so 
They've got maybe four layers of pasta. I think we did five or six. Uh, they're pretty light with the filling. Uh, it does smell really, really good. I'm excited to taste it. All right, now it's time to cut into my lasagna and see how we did. I'm gonna cut myself a piece about the same size as the piece from Olive Garden, which is honestly a really, really big piece of lasagna. Oh yeah, one clean swoop. So this is my lasagna versus Olive Garden's. Now we're gonna taste it. All right, the moment of truth, I have both lasagnas finally ready to go. I've got my lasagna here, Olive Garden's here. I'm just gonna dive right into to Olive Garden's first. It's not bad. First reaction is the pasta is really, really thick. It's almost like, uh, I don't wanna say dense, but kind of dense, but it's not bad. The flavor is actually not bad. A lot of cheese, but it, it's kind of what I expected to be honest. Now we're gonna go into mine. Fresh pasta, super thin sheets, homemade bolognese. I mean, listen, I'm probably gonna be a little bit biased, but this is 10 times better. It's so good. I know you guys are probably thinking it's not fair for me to be the judge of it. So I've got my cameraman, Josh here. He's gonna give them both a try. Obviously he might be a little biased too because he knows which one is which. It's not a blind taste test, but I'm gonna have him give it a try and see what he thinks. All right, Olive Garden first. Again, he used to work at Olive Garden, um, so I feel like he might have a soft spot for him. We'll see what happens. That's a big Let's bite. See. This is a big bite. What are your thoughts on that? Just kind of your average lasagna. It's not bad. It's nothing special. It's, it's not kind of bad. What I expected. Yeah. Um, a lot of cheese. It's kind of dense. A lot of cheese. There's a lot of noodle there. Yeah, a lot of noodle. All right. But not bad. Give mine a try. See what you think. He's never had lasagna made with fresh pasta before. It's only just been like dried, which is what most people have had before. But lasagna with fresh pasta is the way to go. Oh yeah. That one wins? Oh yeah. You're not just it's saying not that. You close. can't just say that either. Like I need like an no, honest. I'm 100% honest. Okay. Like there's a major difference between okay. those two. It wasn't that hard to make. Just kind of take some time and take some patience, but it's so worth it. Making lasagna with fresh pasta is the way to go. You have to try this. Listen, Olive Garden breadsticks, Mm. Actually, that one was a little crusty on the end, but the middle is still really good. They slap every time. 